There are two redox titrations we need to be able to do. Now, we're gonna, I'll do the prac a bit later on, but the first one is taking potassium permanganate with acid solution and reacting it with iron. So, the way you do it, generally, is you have in your burette, like so, so this is your burette, you put your KMnO4 minus aqueous solution, and that is of known concentration. So you know the concentration of that. Now that is nicely purple. Potassium. That's just manganate iron. That's the potassium. That's the whole thing. <coughs> Yeah, that's right. But when we come to the equation, you know. So that is like a purple colour. Is it not meant to go thin at the bottom? Uh, no. In your conical flask, you generally put in here a known volume of iron 2 plus aqueous solution and you also put in some acid because it needs to be under acidic conditions for this to work. So you have to know the half equations for these two. So you need to know the half equation for the manganate reaction, MnO4 minus, and also the half equation for what's happening to iron. So what's happening is MnO4 minus is reacting with acid and five electrons to become Mn2 plus plus 4H2O to be H. Like so. So that's one of your half equations. You've got to know that. The half equation for iron is Fe2 plus is going to Fe3 plus plus an electron. So, so we can do the overall equation overall I've got to type this one by 5 because I've only got one electron there so overall right? well then well, so five. Five. is mn overall minus plus 8 H plus aqueous plus 5 Fe2 plus aqueous goes to be 5 Fe3 plus aqueous plus Mn2 plus aqueous plus 4 H2 plus. Okay. And you need to know. Yeah. Or you just remember these two and don't have to get to it. You've got to know, yeah, you've got to know these two half equations. And you should put those to be able to work it out. So that is the overall equation. So what do you see happening? Well, this is purple. As it hits here, it reacts to become colourless. So your end point is when you see uh, uh, sort of like pale pink colour persist. So, just so it's going to happen up a little bit there. Um, this is very, you'll see it, it kind of like goes this MN2 plus is very, very pale pink, but normally the, the end point is so it goes like so it becomes 
is when uh, you kind of see a pale pink color persist. Because this will decolorize straight away, and then when it stops decolorizing, you know you've got to the end point. So, this is an example. This is the simplest example you're ever going to get. So, 24 centimeters cubed of 0.02 KMnO4 reacted with 20 centimeters cubed of Fe2 plus solution. Calculate the concentration of Fe2 plus. It's not going to be this easy for the exam, I'll tell you now. But, where we start? Titration. Brilliant. I've got the concentration and the volume of KMnO4. So the first thing I work out is concentration of MnO4 minus, which is, oh no, I don't, I work out the moles. So concentration times volume over 1,000, which is 0.02 times 24.3 over 1,000. If I do that, I hate to agree, I get 4.86 times 10 to the minus 4. If it's in centimetres cubed, why is it Because my concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed. I should have put that to That's moles per decimeter cubed. So, in the example, you've got KMNO4. Yeah. It's the moles of MNO4 minus. Yeah, because it doesn't matter because for every one KMNO4. I get one MnO4 minus. So it doesn't matter. You it doesn't matter. That's right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if I've got that many moles of MnO4 minus, how many moles of Fe2 plus must I have had? For every one of those, I need five ions. So times it by five. five. Well done. 4.86 <laughs> times five. That equals 2.43 times 10 to the minus 3. And then final, how do I work out my concentration of Fe2 plus? Concentration is moles. Moles times a thousand. Moles times a thousand, which is 2.43 times 10 to the minus 3. What volume of Fe2 plus did I have? Yeah. So divide by 20, times it by 1,000, and that comes to 0.1215 moles per decimeter 